This is an hourly Bitcoin chart. Not that that's uh, of any relevance for a lot, but you can see obviously big wholesale prices like 70,000 are going to be very, very important to people uh, because it's always the numbers that will get headlines, isn't it? So we know that it, when 70 grand tops out, everybody's going to be talking about it. When 65 grand shows up, everybody's going to be talking about it. And, uh, you know, people will always talk about things like it's going to go to the moon type idea, right? It's going to go to the moon. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. It's going to go to a billion dollars and five cents. Those types of ideas. So Bitcoin plays in these areas. Now, what I like to look at in terms of Bitcoin is a couple of things. Uh, when we move outside of uh, pivot vol volatility, that's always a thing that I pay attention to. So you can see that on a Bitcoin chart, you'll always see the R2 levels. You know, I'm always wary when Bitcoin goes outside of these levels. You know, so anytime th these are simply a thing, I'm always interested in this, just simply as a starting point for a, a possible analysis, right? So, for example, I'm interested in looking at Bitcoin longs down here in the S2 area. I'm interested in Bitcoin shorts when we go above the R2 area here. You know that type of idea. Um, so, when we're inside of a when we're inside of a pivot series as we are at the moment, it's not as it's not as interesting, but you can obviously see the last two trades using that very, very simple start. Um, well, they made a lot of money, right? We got below the S2 here at a price of 63,500, and we got above just a shade under 70,000. So in, in effectively about four days, uh, we put on about five grand there, six grand, seven grand, some you know, nearly seven grand profit on that swing. Since that period, in the last four days, we've managed to make about another seven grand. So we've made about $14,000 on Bitcoin basically in the last 10 days, which is pretty good, right? I mean, it's a pretty good idea to get started with, of course, just using uh, just using pivots. And this is just the pivots indicator set for the R2 and the S2 levels. Make sense? Now that's not it, that's not exactly it, but it's a starting point, right? So what else do you do? Well, I like to look at the sentiment of the crypto space and, and sentiment comes in different forums at different times. And this is where you've got to be a little bit savvy about what you're trading in. Um, in the crypto space, there's always coins that uh, everybody starts talking about. Dodge, remember when uh, Elon Musk got involved in Dodge and uh, everybody was watching what happened, what was happening with Dodge itself. And then obviously the Ethereum got their uh, ETF uh, type uh, uh, approvals. And, and then we get some really daft coins coming out and various things happening elsewhere on other coins. So there's always other things driving. Bitcoin is obviously the well-established. It's the, it's the IBM of the crypto space effectively, isn't it? So I like to see some of these other uh, more, um, I don't know, more boutique type coins to see what the sentiment is for coins. Because if the sentiment's good for coins, it's good for Bitcoin. If it's bad for coins, it's bad for Bitcoin, right? So let's take a look at one of the sentiments that I look at. And, and the ticker symbol I'm going to look at is, is uh, SHIB, SHIB USD, SHIB, S-H-I-B USD. Okay, so this is the SHIB USD narrative. Can you see the sentiment showing up for that big sell? Can you see the sentiment in this? SHIB USD. So this is a this is a, like a boutique type product, okay? So I, I look at it in that sense. And you can see that with this boutique type product, you can see this sell started to show up on a macro chart up here, doesn't it? So you can see that kind of idea of selling as this very strong divergence starts to creep up into that top ledge and the narrative at the top line narrative just in these areas here, right? So that's one thing that we can look at. We can look at those as ideas. Now, the other thing that we can do is a purely technical study. So what technical study do you think we could look at? Well, it's, it's a thing called volume, surprisingly enough. And a lot of people think, wait a second, it can't be as simple as just looking at volume. I'm afraid for a lot of things, it is as simple as looking at volume. Volume is incredibly important in everything we look at, isn't it, really? So when we're looking at uh, something like volume, it's obviously very easy to then look at volume in the world of simply 
overbought and oversold with a volume search. So if I'm going to do that, this is the chart I'm looking at just here, right? So it's uh, it's got an overall sentiment. So I've got sentiment in the background, which is the red, and then I've got volume, and I've got a basic RSI, right? And that's nothing more. It's just an RSI of, of Bitcoin. Don't get panicked about it. It's just an RSI. You can see it's just a normal stock RSI. There's nothing special about it. It's got, it's not my invention. Uh, but the basic idea is that if we're in a red sentiment narrative and I start seeing buying coming in, I know there's a very good chance of getting a short into Bitcoin, for example. So you can see a couple of examples here. You can see that we're in a good location here. You can see some buying. See the end ball in the background? Okay, so you can see the end vol in the background. I'll get rid of all the stuff in the background. You'll see it a lot clearer. So you'll see the end vol in the background starting to come in when we're starting to head up into those areas. You see it? So all we're doing when we head into those areas, when we're in the red side, is find the volume, find the high price, find the volume, find the high price, find the volume, find the high price, right? And obviously, if we can find the volume and high price, we're going to be more inclined to be short into those volume surges. So when we start looking at this, that's what we're basically asking to find is the volume into those high prices in the right narrative. And when we look at those as possible trade outcomes, you can see that that volume starts to come into the 2R level. And then, of course, we start to see another sellable opportunity here again above a day pivot. We're never going to sell below a pivot. Uh, but, uh, but selling above a pivot is at least a good starting point to get short into that as a sell. So the last two trades on Bitcoin, um, Theo, have been short sell opportunities into these two areas. And it's as simple as that. Sell side, sell side only. So that's the uh, that's the view. I mean, you can obviously do whatever time frame of analysis you want, but I wouldn't be wanting to do anything but sell Bitcoin at the moment. And uh, the last short sell was at 70,000 and then another short sell here at 66 and a half. And uh, we've just tapped the bottom edges here at 63. So that's the current uh, the current trades we have on BTC. Uh, as far as buy trades are concerned, uh, you can see there if we go back in the background, you'll see where the buy trade really started to show up was in here. Do you see it? So can you see the massive surge of volume when we got that tap into the bottom edge? Well, that's obviously a, a very, very simple buy trade right there. Get it? So you've got to look at the volume and say, well, if anybody doesn't see that, I don't know what you're going to see, right? Because that's just easy to spot. And uh, massive volume with a with a diverging storyline like this can't be, can't be missed. I mean, you just can't miss that. So you're buying $55,000 Bitcoin. And uh, you're simply then long Bitcoin until you get up to 70,000 here. So you made 15 grand. Well, it sounds as if, it looks as if you've been in that trade a long time to make 15 grand. But you've been in that trade, guys, Monday the 8th of July to effectively um, the 17th of July. So you've only been in the trade for nine days. And you made $19,000 per coin. Now, remember, you can buy this and sell this on your, on your uh, on your leveraged instruments products you you don't have to you don't have to be buying an actual physical coin but my goodness if that's what you can make on a single physical coin and you're 15 grand in profit in 9 days is i think is a pretty good proposition for anybody using the simple tools and uh, getting involved in the easy stuff when it shows up yeah so volume rsi's um, some kind of a sentiment indication of where you're going with this and uh, trying to figure out the underlying storyline and making sure that uh, the storyline kind of ties in with that big picture narrative as well on the dailies and on the hourlies. I wouldn't go any lower than the hourlies. doesn't make a lot of sense as far as I'm concerned, but certainly just giving ourselves that bigger picture narrative, allowing us to figure out what we should be trying to do in most locations uh, to me, um, it's it's a pretty straightforward technical trade. You know, pretty straightforward technical trade. Yeah. Classroom, guys, in half an hour.